Welcome to Talk is Derek. I'm your host, Sami Derek. And joining me today is a very lovely, multi talented lady. She's a performing artist, a second year law student here at Trier University. And we'll get to know much more about her. Halaku Gene. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, Halaku, I really wanted to bring you on the show because you're a very talented lady. <laughs> I have to admit that. Having heard your performance at the last matriculation we had, I was blown away and I, had, and I, had, and I, and I decided she must come on my show. Yes. Uh, so, before we get to the musical side, for those who are watching, they would like to know who is Halaku Gene, so please. Who is Halaku Gene other than the music? Other than music, yeah. Um, well, <laughs> um, okay, like as you said, I'm Halaku Gene, I'm the last one within a family of three children and my lovely parents. Um, I'm the only girl, so some people say that has influenced how I am and how I act. Um, I'm also really interested in giving back to society, specifically amongst my age bracket. I believe in giving back to your own. Um, I'm Burji. I'm very proud about that, actually. I'm a Burji. I'm from a very small community from um, Upper Eastern in Marsabit. Yeah. I don't know much I can say, anything else I can say about myself. I have a very loving family, a big group of friends. I'm very happy most of the time. Mm -hmm. I burst out in song and laughter a lot, <laughs> even when there's no reason to. Mm -hmm. I love law. Yeah. And I've just been blessed all through. So nothing much to say. Uh, so I would like you, uh, you, to, you to tell me, like, when was the first time you discovered that you had a high affinity for music? anything music oriented and from that moment till now what is the first time i discovered well in terms of performance as an individual it was in high school when i realized that yo you can actually sing um i had a group of friends who would always encourage me to try out singing in public because of course you know you're class becomes your family. So I didn't believe they were telling me the truth until one day I sang in a service within school, around a thousand students. And something everyone has to admit is that in high school your friends are so critical. They can either break your esteem or make it. So my, after singing, um, a bunch of seniors came up to me and they're like, yeah, why didn't you say you could sing? And I was like, yeah, I didn't think it was something I should have brought up. Yeah. So I think from then it was always a matter of, so I know I can sing, now what will I do with it? Yeah. Uh, you've, yeah when you were given the intro about yourself, you said you've been blessed. And many performing artists have a strong spiritual conviction of, of some kind. So I'd like to ask, do you subscribe to a certain religion? Yes, and, yes yeah. I do. And Which I am is that? very strong about it. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. My parents are Christians. So I've been brought up in a very Christian mm -hmm. <laughs> family. Um, church was really important in our lives. My parents have always been very rooted in honesty and giving back and generally just being good people. Um, I've, I've been fellowshipping at Old Saints Cathedral since I was a child. So a lot about me is due to that. I also began singing in church. I think most musicians always say we began in choir yeah, in church, yeah. but I did. I did praise and worship. I learned to be confident in stage in front of people and then I grew. I grew from there, and then I'd like to say there's no limit, so, but I don't know my limit. <laughs> yeah, okay, so does your religion influence the type of music you sing, how you sing it, to the people you sing it to? Yes, but directly and indirectly, more so for me it's indirectly. The principles I subscribe to within my religion are who define me. Um, I'm not a religious person, I just have a very strong relationship with God for myself, like, that's something I feel that is really important. So I don't necessarily write music that is strongly rooted in the word, but it's music that I feel is fulfilling. Um, uplifting of spirits, speaking of a message, yeah, basically. So when I mean indirectly, I state that I am who I am because of what I learned growing up, which had a lot to do with church. So through that, I'm able to express myself in my music like that. Okay, now, with, uh, as you know, as you're giving your intro, it seemed that you had a very strong support system, mm -hmm. your family, the <laughs> church. Basically, everyone around you was pushing you to be what you could be. But I'm sure there were obstacles along the way. 
could you like try to highlight some of those obstacles you had? Mm-hmm. Other people are happy with you doing it as a side hustle, mm-hmm. as a side thing, as a side hobby, you mm-hmm. know. But no one really believes that you can take it really deep, like you can make a living out of it. That was always the problem for me. When, um, when you're the only one dreaming and everyone else around you feels that it's just a dream. Uh-huh. I've just been grateful because I always feel like, to some extent, I meet people who share a similar dream with mine. And I got that opportunity towards the end of my high school life, closer towards my uni life, and even when I was in uni. That's where I started feeling like, oh, yeah, people actually do understand that I want to pursue this professionally and build great bonds and links with people who have made it already in that kind of field. But that was my main challenge, where I had to overcome the fact that it wasn't being taken seriously to the extent that I wanted it to. That was even in the deepest places, that was my family. What they were all about would come for events. My parents have never missed an event of mine. My siblings have been there all through. But, you know, when it began a discussion of, mm-hmm. I might actually be considering taking it the whole way. Uh-huh. Then they would be like, what? I thought it was a nice hobby. Yeah. You can do it on the side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I was like, no, it's not a hobby, you know. Mm-hmm. Another challenge for me was, I'm not able to find people who share what I want to share. Um, you grow when you're surrounded by people who have the same principles and goals. So for me, it took a while to find people like that. But I, I'm partly to blame. I believe I didn't do as much as I should have done in building a foundation. So now is when I'm building a foundation. I feel a couple of things are important. One of the hindrances was not having knowledge of an instrument. I didn't master an instrument before. So that limits you because you have to rely on other people to play for you and do all that. I also didn't really take time to study theoretical music yeah. and people speak and it goes oh above yeah. your head you're yeah. like okay I don't know what's going on yeah. but like I said towards the end of high school and now till now I took a lot of time to learn and I'm still learning I'm still growing I'm still building a foundation because I don't believe I'm where I need to be in order to launch myself like my pastor likes saying launching into the deep yeah, I get, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah not yet mm. Mm, and lastly there is a lot of stereotypism. People expect people of our age to sing a certain way, act a certain way, go with a certain flow. And I'm different. It's something that has never been hidden from me. My sound is different. What I write is different. So that has always been a problem. My performance style is different. So for me, that was always a challenge, having to, first of all, work towards that fact that I'm not going to give you what you're used to being given. So please take me as I am. Now as I progress, I realize that there's a market for different. And lastly, for me, it was quality. Everyone wants to take shortcuts. Everyone wants to get there really fast. Mm-hmm. But you're, because no one understands your passion for what you want, then they really don't give you a chance to do it the right way, which is take the time, put in the effort, do the cleaning, do the financing, do the perfecting, and then bring it all out okay. and that was always a problem for me okay so you've co- you've reached this far who would you say is that pivotal person if it wasn't for them i wouldn't be here that one person just one name i don't want to i don't want to say this one and that one that person the backbone they have <laughs> been the be all and all as far as your music career is concerned you're making me get into trouble <laughs> no, no, you have to mention one name one name only <laughs> Seriously, I'm serious. Just one name. I can cheat and say one entity, okay, which fine, is a marriage, my parents. Your parents. <laughs> yeah. So you have very supportive parents. You have no idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My parents have been at the stage when my friends are screaming, when mom is screaming louder. Really? You know, my dad has driven from the middle of nowhere to come for my shows. My brothers have, have really, I don't my family is just... You're going to make me get emotional. Mm. But my parents... But pick one person. My mom. Your mom. My mom. My mom has told me, even if we're broke, Mm -hmm. we'll take you to music school. Even if we have nothing, we'll find a way. If it's Mm -hmm. something you love to do, we'll do it. Yeah, my mom. My mom, definitely. Mm -hmm. She's always... She's special. She's always said, um, you're really good, and there should be no reason why the rest of the world shouldn't know how good you are. And even when I'm dreaming, it seems such a reality when I'm around my mother because she believes. 
Mm. She believes in me. Yeah. <laughs> so my mom. As a performing artist, I would like you to tell me what it's what's your point of view of the current Kenyan music industry. But you'll hold that thought. We'll be right back after the commercial break. Okay, welcome from the break. I'm your host, Sami Derek, and this is Talk is Derek. And we are joined, of course, by the very lovely Halaku Gene, who was about to criticize and evaluate the Kenyan musical industry right now. So Halaku, just before we went on the break, I asked you the question, what do you think of the Kenyan, mu Kenyan musical industry? Your thoughts? Um, there was a time I felt that like it was non-existent, but that's a little bit too harsh, a judgment. Mm -hmm. The Kenyan musical industry. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know any upcoming musician who says anything good about the music industry. Um, wow, it hurts. The music industry is biased, is very limiting. And then again, it can be a beautiful place. It has two aspects to it. That's how I like to think of it. You know, sometimes you have to console yourself. Yeah. So we have the people who form the industry in terms of the people who are the market for the industry. And then we have the guys who make the industry. Mm -hmm. The guys who make the industry are really, really rigid. They are a certain way of doing things that is not progressive. If the way we were producing music in the past and compared to now, the era of today, there is not much change really in comparison to other music industries found in other countries. Um, we don't have a system where we accentuate growth in terms of production, sound quality, video quality, marketing. Um, what else? What else could I say? Return of like, um, capital. Like the musicians in the country really don't get what they should be getting at the time. And everyone keeps telling you, and I'm sure you've heard of this phrase, oh, you want to be a musician in Kenya? Um, I think you should reconsider. If not, try get out. And that's the truth because that's what happens. Kenya is really, really good at stealing uh -huh. as a whole yeah. in terms of we can pirate everything and anything. Anything that is brought up today, tomorrow there will be a copy, you, you know. Yeah, and that really hurts because then what exactly do I gain as a musician in terms of originality and something that we like to call intellectual property? I took time to nurture that stuff. So for me, the music industry is flawed. But then again, where in the world is any industry not flawed? You know, yeah. we just have a lot to work on. And the market is growing. We had a challenge in the past where musicians felt obligated to write what the market wants, what the market requires, and what the market deems is a hit. But now, people are branching out. You as a musician, you as the creative artisan, should be the one to determine what you should produce and let the whole world follow through. That's what brings new styles, new sound. But if you're always anticipating what the people will want, then you always write what should we call a club hit mm -hmm. or a certain sound. And then we have 10, 20, 30 songs of a certain era that sound the same. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if someone took the time to look at music between a particular era, they would realize that they're pretty similar. And that's not a good thing for versatility because we don't have competition or change. Mm -hmm. So I think the one thing I'd say about the music industry is I wish it grows as a faster rate because it's not at the same time and it's unfo unforgiving. It's unforgiving in the sense that if you don't make it the first time, you probably won't make it the second time. Uh -huh. That should mean people should try and change. So then again, growth is really key in our industry. Okay, you've spoken of growth, but someone once joked, it was a bad joke at first, that thing with music equals money, because both of them start with the syllable M, both of them have five syllables, and that's what makes, you know, this, you know the wheel spin, you know. If there isn't money, the music industry will not grow, and that's why a lot of musicians get into music because they want they are in it for the money, not the passion. Is that the reason as to why Kenya maybe lags behind? Maybe because someone isn't getting paid enough, maybe or someone just do, does do, does it for the money or I think I can throw it back to you. Mm -hmm. Sami, wouldn't you want to get appreciation for what you've done? I would. Then I think it's a simply put answer. But is money the center, the be all end all as far as music is concerned? As far as anything is concerned, it should not be your main motivation to gain money. That shouldn't be the driving force. Because if it is, then you have a problem. Money won't let you stay up late, 
Money won't let you wake up in the middle of the night with an idea. Money won't let you stand on a stage with people who do not understand your content and let you sing it all out. Money doesn't justify a lot of things. But then again, it's really important because I do eat money, not appreciation. Okay, I yeah. do eat money in terms of support for my family. I am a human being with needs that do extend to money, you know. Yeah, so guess. it's a balance, but it should not be your main motivation. But then again, it can be a motivation. Okay. Yeah. So now we've spoken about all that. Now I would like to know what's what uh, does the future hold for Halaku again? Music-wise, <sighs> considering that the fact you're still pursuing a law degree, what does the future hold for you? Like I said, you like getting me into trouble. <laughs> no, no, you just, I'm just asking. I haven't really told people job. that. <laughs> because um, that means it actually is a reality. Okay, for me, in real sense, I just really want to finish my law degree. And I don't want to do anything that is mediocre. If I'm doing something, I'd really like it to be the best of my ability. So I hope I do really well with my law degree. It comes in really handy. People take advantage of you. So I want to have the law on my side. Um, but then again, music is me and I am music. Um, once upon a time, someone once asked me, when you walk into a court, would you have the same feeling that you'd have when you're on stage singing a hook to a song that you've written and people are singing along? In comparison to you're in a court and you've won the case, which would win? And then you would get to know where you belong. But for me, I feel like one necessitates the other. I don't want to work really hard, get a really big music industry going for me in terms of my brand, and then have to pay someone else to come tell me the legal issues within my small mm -hmm. <laughs> empire. Yeah. And um, I'd be like, no, it would be important to have the knowledge. Knowledge is key for everything. Um, to answer your question, I'd like to finish my degree. Um, I definitely want to pursue music. I'm looking into production. I have a couple of friends of my age who are doing music. Oh my God. Full in time. another level, not even full time. In another level, I have Mr. Boogs, Bogwa that is. I have so many other people. I have classmates who I was with in Saudi Academy. Shout out to Royal Tiba Black. Shout out to Elani. Uh, shout out to Noni. Shout out to everyone that I've met in this journey. Even ever popular. So, anyway. And I've learned so much from them. But like I said, I want to learn from them and be even just like them, if not bigger, you know. Yeah, I have a lot of work to do. But music is definitely my main line with school, after school. Okay, after school, of course. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I want to pursue anything after my degree. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Of course, this show wouldn't be complete without a performance by Alak Gen herself. Black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, hey, I'm an African girl, oh, 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 black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, yeah, I'm an African girl, oh, oh, black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, I'm an African girl, oh, 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 black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, black skin, I'm an African girl, and I've been walking down this road for about 15 years now, and I can tell you it's been one hell of a ride, yeah. So Halako, I'm sure after 
when they watch this show, you get a lot more fans than you already have. And and I'm sure they would like to know where to find you on your social media platforms. So please, by all means, look into that camera and just tell them. Okay, thanks, Sami Derek. Well, you can find me on Twitter as Halaku underscore Gene. You can find me on Instagram as Halaku Gene. And you can find me on my page on Facebook as Halaku. Please know that all of the Halakus are H-A-L-A-K-H-U. And the Gene is G-E-N-E. Thank you so much. Wow, that was an incredible show. I would like to thank everyone who made this possible. From the technical crew here with me on set, of course to the broadcast club, and of course Riara University for offering the grounds, the equipment and everything that we're using right now. And of course, the guest, Alak Gede. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you for accepting to come. <laughs> yeah, and of course to the audience, thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, God bless. Thank you.